My name is Marta Wallander and I'm going to talk to you today about creating and building momentum. Um, about a year ago, on the 1st of March 2016, I appeared on the BBC Live News on primetime television to provide expert opinion and views um, and knowledge about the Calais camp in France. Um, just a few months before that, my life looked very different from that. Um, I was working 70 hours a week in an unrelated day job, hardly ever set foot outside of the office. I had never personally been to the Calais camp at that time, and I had certainly never been invited to provide expertise and knowledge on, um, uh, in major media outlets. Um, so how on earth did that happen? Well, I believe it's about creating and building momentum around a cause that you truly believe in. My story began just a few months before that, on the so-called International Human Rights Day in December 2015, when I posted on Facebook, as you do. Um, I was frustrated with the inaction of the French and British governments vis-à-vis -vis the human suffering in the Calais camp on the UK's doorsteps. Um, I also felt that there was something very concrete missing in the citizen response, in our response. I felt that there was a gap that someone needed to fill. So, posted on Facebook, and the response was really overwhelming. I heard from a large number of people from across my network, all of whom wanted to join me in whatever plans I had in mind. Um, so, I, got to, I had to do a bit of thinking. I had to do a mapping exercise to see what other organizations were already doing and what that missing piece of the puzzle really was. And I found that there was a striking absence of re reliable facts and figures relating not only to the Calais camp, but also the situation of refugees across Europe. Um, there was no reliable evidence about the specific challenges people were facing or about the reasons they had come to Europe or to Calais, why they wanted to come to the UK. And also, more generally, we didn't know much about people's dreams and aspirations. So, um, I thought we needed to fill this gap. And I brought together a number of people in a strategic planning meeting. Uh, a number of professionals, qualified people from a variety of sectors. And we started teasing out the objectives of the project. We thought about potential partners in the field. And we started planning our first trip to the Calais camp to set up a data collection study. About 10 days later, we had a branding, we had a website, we had Twitter, we had Facebook, and we had a large social media following. The Refugee Rights Data Project was born, and what had, had begun as a mere a small idea in my head had become reality. A month later, the researchers started arriving in the Calais camp, and the research study could commence. And, one might ask oneself, how did we manage to build this momentum so rapidly? I believe there were three key components. The first one being fearlessness. Okay, so you need to acknowledge your fears, be it fears of failure, um, fears of losing control, fears of losing money, or fears of actual risks and dangers. But you mustn't let these fears stop you from going ahead with the plans you have in mind. And based on this idea, I, um, I, I took the, the very last of my small savings and the very little free time I had, uh, and I invested all of this in this idea fearlessly. Okay, so I rented a couple of vehicles, identified some potential drivers, bought a pair of rubber boots, um, I got some 20 return coach tickets for researchers to travel to Calais. I flew in a research coordinator from the Syrian camps in Lebanon and another human rights expert I flew in from Italy. At this point, my sister told me that I was absolutely crazy. And I suppose she was absolutely right, in fact. However, surrounded by a fantastic new team of rec newly recruited researchers and other team members, I went ahead fearlessly and with great determination that we must and can succeed. And that brings me to the second key component that I believe we need if we are to sustain the momentum. And that is trust. 
You see, in order to keep the energy levels up, you need to empower others to join you. You need to make sure that you put your trust in people and in their abilities to take on great responsibilities, to lead and to thrive. To give you one example of how I uh, worked with this principle is, I was, um, well, during my first time in the Calais camp, I was sitting in one of the cafes in the camp. The cafe, I believe, was called the Three Idiots. Um, I was sitting there and I met two students, Karen and Musashi. We got talking about the project and I could instantly feel how genuinely passionate they were about the cause and, and what great potential they seemed to have. Um, and before I knew it, I had made Karen and Musashi the two key field coordinators for the pilot study in the Calais camp. I took a leap of faith in them and I never looked back. By putting my trust in them and by making them feel empowered, making them feel that I believed in their capacity to lead, I saw them excel in their roles, I saw them thrive. And it's exactly this kind of energy you need to keep your momentum going. However, I think there's a third key component that we need to bear in mind, and that is agility. So whatever you've set in motion, whatever project you, you've, you've started up, is bound to start losing speed at some point, or even come to a halt if it meets external resistance, right? And that's when you need to not just keep pushing forward, but you also need to be agile and take decisive decisions to successfully navigate external changes in your external environment, things that are outside of your own control. Um, in the early days of the Refugee Rights Data Project, uh, we had to rely a lot on agility and conscious decisions to adapt to the external environment. For example, as we were planning the, the pilot study, we suddenly heard that the southern part of the camp was going to be completely demolished during the week of our planned research study. So, we had to move the entire operations an entire week forward to make sure that the operations could go ahead successfully. And so we did. Another example is when the BBC phoned me up for that first interview. Um, at that point, we hadn't actually processed or analyzed all of the data from Calais, which meant that I would have very little to talk about, because that was the whole point of the interview. So, I phoned up the, um, our, our statistical analyst and I, I said, look, Mohammed, I really need some data. Can we please, can we produce and release some preliminary facts? He saw the importance in this and we released some preliminary data that I was able to take with me to seize the opportunity and to keep the momentum going. Um, and, and those are just some of the examples of how we adapted to external conditions with a lot of agility, allowing us to keep up momentum. Okay, so that was my personal experience, creating and building momentum based on fearlessness, trust and agility. But needless to say, all of this needs to be underpinned by genuine passion. Okay, so my passion, as you would have figured at this point, was my long-standing belief that all humans are born equal and, de and deserve a fighting chance. If you've been persecuted, you've lived through war or extreme poverty, you are entitled to a second chance and protection. And Europe can and must provide that protection. As human beings, we have responsibilities to stand up for fellow humans. And I'm convinced that all of you can do the same. You can go out and create and build momentum around a cause that you believe in, something that you are passionate about. And I'm going to leave you with a quote by Amelia Earhart, the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic. She said, the most effective way to do it is to do it. Thank you very much. <laughs>